Number four, Mike. If you know all about Total Drama, you definitely know everything about him. Mike may seem like an ordinary kid, but we all know for his multiple personality disorder. These include Chester, a cranky old man who pops up whenever Mike gets frustrated. Svetlana, a five-star Russian gymnast champion that takes the spotlight every time there's a, an athletic challenge. Vito, a strong hunk that only comes out when Mike takes off his shirt. Manitoba Smith, a Canadian Indiana Jones character with an Australian accent that always wears a fedora in order to uncover puzzles and obstacles. And finally, Mal, Mike's evil dark side that only awakes if Mike gets hit on the head. No matter which personality he becomes, Mike will always be there to help his friends, especially Zoe. Falling out the log, Mike will save her. Getting attacked by a giant spider, Mike will save her. Trying to climb a tree, Mike will save her. As you can tell, Mike's goal through Revenge of the Island is to be with Zoe and try to control his other personalities. While Mal is a dangerous personality that should not roam free, the other personalities are not considered villains. All they want is to have some free time in the outside world, and their skills ended up mostly useful throughout Mike's gameplay. <laughs> Although they gave Mike a hard time, he stand up for himself and fought back to reunite with Zoe. As for All-Stars, he tried to stop Mal from controlling his mind and win back his other personalities, but it ended up making things worse. Although Mike didn't fully compete at TDAS his way, he still went on a hero's journey. Inside his subconscious, he recruited the other personalities to fight against Mal to regain control of his mind again. And because of his journey, they started to have a new appreciation for Mike, mostly Svetlana. And in the end, Mike gets his hero kiss and now obtains the skills his other personalities have. Still don't approve that reset button because no part of that finale is cooler than how K.O. dealt with his ego. He's an oddball, but he is awesome in every way. Multiples mean there's more mics to love. Here I am, <laughs> Miss Canada! Number 3. Cameron. Once known as a bub boy, he never went outside, go swimming, or anything like that because he had an overprotected mom. But when Cameron competed on Total Drama Season 4, he proved himself that he was worthy enough to stay in the game. Even though there were many times he got himself injured, his adversity helped him win many challenges. Even though Cameron is a 97 and a half pound weakling, he used his brains over brawn to withstand many obstacles and help his friends. He helped Mike control his multiple personalities, led Zoe through the season finale of All Stars, and rescue everyone from the mutants in the Revenge of the Island finale. Oh yeah! Thanks, doll. Sure! For the person like Cameron, he is obviously the underdog, but what makes him stand out is his character growth. Back to the season 4 finale, his million dollar goal was to pay the money for his bubble. But in the actual ending, he didn't receive any critical conditions, and decided that he doesn't need his bubble after all. Instead, he wants to spend the money on everyone. Cameron, he started off as a boy in a bubble, but he came out as a man in a bubble. Ah! Oh, it's so heavy! Number two, Gwen. I know what you guys are thinking, but she was a villainous vulture. First, she was put on that team because of that dumb love triangle. Second, who really calls her new Heather? That's right, no one, because she did do some nice things. A lot of nice things, and those nice things outnumbered that incident 10 to 1. In the beginning of her debut, she didn't really care much about being on the show or want to compete, but she slowly realized that there are some nice things on the island to stick around rather than to have a boyfriend like Trent win the money for an art college or getting back at the people for messing with her. And yes, I'm counting this as a heroic deed. Did you say you brought a red ant farm with you? Yes. Speaking of Heather, Gwen is actually the person that finally got rid of her in I Triple Dog Dare You by teaming up with Owen and whooping her with dares. It made the season less predictable because it would be just a hero versus villain where Owen would obviously win. 
Well, he did win, but putting Gwen in the final two makes it more interesting and weigh in on who you were going to root for. In Season 2, however, things didn't turn up well. Ever since Trent threw challenges over Gwen and her team, her friend starts to question if she's doing this on purpose even though she never wants Trent to throw them for her. So she threw the prison challenge for the Killer Grips in order to call it even and make up her and Trent's mistakes. And yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Even though she became a villainous vulture, she still had the heart of a hero because she wanted to make amends with Courtney over kissing Duncan. But she ended up giving her some coincidental accidents. Most of the deeds she actually done with Courtney is rescue her from a man-eating deer and find Duncan to help Team Amazon win the Ripper Challenge. The reason why Sunday Muddy Sunday was the most hated episode ever because Gwen worked really hard on having Courtney to be her friend again and she did all that amending for nothing making that side plot pointless. But there was another thing Gwen did on All Stars. When Cameron joined the Vultures by default and how the others were looking after oneself, Gwen did help fix Cam's glasses and even rescue him from certain death in the Mind Challenge. Chris may see Gwen as a villainous vulture for his amusement, but in the audience's eyes, she is actually a heroic hamster. Whoops, my stick slipped, old Heather. I've been waiting to do that for four seasons. <laughs> now before we get to number one, here's an honorable mention. Duncan. It's a little weird to talk about Duncan because there are many ways to describe him. He's a juvenile delinquent that doesn't play by the rules, but it reveals he sometimes have a soft side. Well, believe it or not, there are some traits that Duncan may be considered a hero. And who can he trust? Jeff lost DJ's pet rabbit, so Duncan decides to give him a new rabbit. And we do figure out why would he do something so nice. My dog Petey ran away on me when I was six, and I didn't want DJ to have to go through the same thing, okay? I knew it! I knew underneath all that crusty shell there was a big heart. But it's not just that. He was also useful in many team building challenges like the dodgeball game, the acting challenge, even held Harold in the Japanese challenge. As the seasons passed, he started to grow like as some sort of outlandish hero, especially when he rescued Gwen from getting leashed and warned Zoe about Mike's evil personality. The reason why Duncan is not on this list because he's not much of a hero. In fact, even when he does some villainous deeds, he's not considered a villain. I see Duncan more as an anti-hero. Even if he can sometimes have a soft side, he has done a lot of mean things that sometimes make him a villain, including picking on Harold, bullying other people, and carving graffiti of his favorite skull. I'll give him credit that some of his dirty deeds were given to a good cause, like stealing food from Jeff to give it to the other players, and blowing up Chris's beloved possessions. He is not a big sweetheart, but Duncan is pretty much Duncan. Now that... <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and the number one total drama hero is... Owen. Oh yeah. You knew he would be on this list. I will admit, I had a hard time to pick either Gwen or Owen to be at number one. But how did this cheese puff meet on top of the totem pole? When Owen signed up for Total Drama, he didn't enter the show for fame and fortune. He wanted to have a fun time, making new friends and have all the food he wants. The big heroic deed was when he scored an advantage in the clip diving challenge. He was pretty scared, but he won for his team. Even when he was hired as the producer's mole in Season 2, we loved seeing him as Owen and not some backstabber. There were some other good deeds he did like help Noah with his relationship with Emma, rescues him from Jack the Ripper, invite everyone to his yacht party, and many more. But the funny thing is, that's not the real reason why he's at number one. I think the truth is, is Owen the reason why we keep watching Total Drama? Obviously, you can't have Total Drama without Chris McClain, and you can argue Mr. Coconut is like the mascot of the series. Owen is the one that brings a lot of the excitement and energy for the series as a memorable character. When he and Noah competed on the Redonkulous Race, people were hyped that he and his friend were on the spin-off series. Jeff did warm up in the spin-off a bit, and Leonard, nobody asked for his return. 
While the race characters were mostly good, Owen proved himself that he wasn't just a one-trick pony for one series. He was good enough for any Total Drama series. And like in the original Total Drama, he did it for the love of the game. I don't know for certain if he can save the franchise with Total Drama Rama, Daycare, or whatever you call it, but maybe he could be the key to make the new series at least passable. I know it sounds like a far-fetched fanboy theory, but we love Owen as Owen no matter how many times he pass out gas. But this is my list, and I declare Owen is hereby the number one total drama hero. We love you, Owen! This Chris is for you! I love this game! Do you agree with my list? Are there any other heroes that I missed? Well, leave them in the comments below and honor them. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe me for a new review and other project. I'm Matt Harrow-Patrick. Now, if you'll excuse me, Captain Alberta is on TV. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe me for a new review and other project every week. I'll see you soon.